Good morning. You know, it's um, pretty apparent that AI is transforming industries. And one of the things that's great about the work that we all get to do is to get up every morning and know that we're, we're making a change to the world. But the important part is that we're making changes that are for the good and for the benefit of society. And there's numerous examples, but just to kind of cite a few that I'm very excited about. In healthcare, we're seeing how the use of AI can improve the, the correctness of diagnosis. And on top of it, we see that there are use cases for remote diagnostics or patient care. As an example, monitoring a patient with Parkinson's disease, very difficult to put a doctor in every home, but with the use of AI, we can really monitor the progression of the disease. In finance, we're looking at how AI can make the world safer. For fraud detection, we've seen huge use cases for identification of fraud, very well established, but also looking at how enhancements to a compliance can be made or how can a flash crash potentially be prevented. We see AI also, of course, being used very heavily in transportation. Uh, it's no secret at this point that Intel is very bullish on, on the notion of autonomous driving cars. And on top of that, we see how, how all of that data coming from autonomous vehicles and from other vehicles out there, the camera and the video data can be used for enhanced search and rescue and other types of applications. So with all of this change, we like to, to see it coming up to what we call AI for good. We like to see the positive sides of, of AI and how we together as an industry can promote these use cases. I want to give a couple of examples. One of my favorites that we're working on at Intel right now is with Zhejiang University in China. And what they recognize is that to be able to do adequate radiology in a country of 1.3 billion people that's widely distributed geographically, that the use of AI could improve diagnostics and allow those people who may not be the most experienced doctors to be able to do adequate uh, identification. This study that we did with the university was on the identification of, of potentially um, a, a, a cancerous thyroid nodules. What we found was that we studied a, a panel of, of uh, educated and experienced doctors, and they basically achieved a 75% rate of, of adequate prediction. What we were able to optimize with Zhejiang, we were able to get the system to be able to do 90% uh, uh, accurate prediction rate. That's huge. And we now have already rolled this out in production, and thousands of patients have already been screened using this type of care. So it's a, a great way of making the world better, collaborating with universities, researchers, to be able to optimize a platform that improves the world around us. But sometimes it's not just the actual analytic solution that needs to drive collaboration. It may be the data in some cases as well. As an example, when you look at the population of genomic data, a, a genome, a full, fully sequenced genome, can require one terabyte of data. And as you might imagine, moving all of that data between institutions is not necessarily the most uh, cost-effective or, or palatable way to make it happen. So we've been working with the Broad Genomics Institute, one of the leaders, to be able to produce a toolkit for high-performance analytics and a very, very scalable uh, uh, database for, for uh, storing genome data. But then taking it one step further, we've been driving technology in partnership with uh, Ontario Cancer Institute, um, Dana-Farber, and OHSU on what we call the Collaborative Cancer Cloud. And the idea behind this is proving out the technology that each institution can have their own genome database. But as you can imagine, the improvements in prediction really come from aggregating and sharing all of that data. And if we can provide the distributed databases, enable the level of security and the privacy protection required, we can really aggregate together a much bigger population of genomes. It certainly is applicable that AI is good for industry, whether that's healthcare or financial services or, or transportation, but we also see that AI for good can be applied to the benefit of society as well. And one use case I want to highlight here is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. It may shock you that that in the United States alone, over half a million children are reported missing each year. 
And the process by which NECMEC, which is a nonprofit, goes by trying to identify and, and support uh, and help save children is a very manual one. They get over 10 million cyber tips reported a year about children at risk. And you can imagine that deluge of data is just mind-numbing to be able to go through. In fact, unfortunately, sometimes it can take as much as 30 days from the timeline where it's reported to when it's actually dispatched out to uh, law enforcement agencies. We can go reduce that time, and our mission at Intel is to be able to take that down from 30 days to, to one day. To make AI for good a reality, it has to be a very complex set of technologies. And as you in this room know, integrating uh, Internet of Things, distributed platforms, security, uh, ingest, reasoning systems, deep learning all together is extremely complicated. And we view it as our mission to really democratize AI, to enable AI for good to make sure that there's both the computing power and the open platforms out there. And in fact, we recently launched our umbrella portfolio called the Intel Nirvana portfolio to advance AI for good. So I hope that you'll join us in our mission in collaborating, whether that's at the platform level, whether it's at the AI analytics level, or whether it's potentially investigating data sharing. If you're interested in more about learning about our technologies or initiatives or sharing your own thoughts about how we can advance AI for good, I hope we can see you later at our booth. Thank you very much.